Many plot types such as 3D surface, 3D bars, and contour can be created from data contained in a matrix object or arranged in a block of cells in a worksheet like we have here. We'll call such a ladder arrangement a virtual matrix. The key difference between the two is that data in a matrix object only supports a linear mapping of x and y coordinates, but a virtual matrix supports nonlinear mapping as well. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create intersecting color mapped surface plots from virtual matrix data. Data organized as a matrix in a worksheet as we have here. In both these sheets, the data has x coordinate values in the top row and y coordinate values in the first column. Requirements of intersecting surfaces is that both must share the same x and y. Notice that the x-coordinates have nonlinear spacing. Now let's create a 3D color map surface plot by highlighting the entire v-surface 1 sheet. And then I'll select plot 3D surface color map surface. A dialog opens allowing me to specify the format of my data in the virtual matrix. In other words, I need to specify where my x and y coordinate values are located. In this case, my x is across columns, and the x values are in the first data row, or the first row in my selection, the first row in the worksheet. The y values are in the first column in the selection. I'm now going to click OK, and I'll get a color map surface plot of this entire worksheet of data. Now I'm going to go back to the workbook and repeat those steps for the data in vSurface 2. Highlight the entire sheet, click on Plot, Color Map Surface, and in the dialog that opens, it's going to pick up my last used settings. The data is formatted the same way, where X is across columns. The X is in the first row in my selection. I've selected the entire worksheet, so it's the first row, and the Y is in the first column. So I just simply click OK. And I have my second surface plot. By first creating these two separate plots, I can then add one of the surface plots to the graph layer of the other. So let's go ahead and hide the workbook, and then tile these windows. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is add the data in graph 2 here into graph 1. So I right click on the layer icon and I choose layer contents and in the dialog that opens on the left hand side I have my available data and I have the data that's plotted. So I want to add vSurface 2 to the layer and it's going to add the second surface to this graph 1 window. So I click OK, and then this particular graph will have both the data from vSurface 1 and vSurface 2. And the origin will display the two surfaces with the proper intersection. So now let's go ahead and make a few edits or format changes to the graph. At this point, if this is what we actually wanted as our end result and we really weren't interested in this separate graph, I can just go ahead and delete it. The key is that you need to generate a plot to begin with, which then sets up this virtual matrix. And then Origin lets you add it to another graph window. So I can go ahead now and just delete this one because this is what I'm interested in in the end. So I want to go ahead now and double click on my x-axis title and I can remember my x values were uh, non-linearly spaced so I have control over that, setting up um, different options here. We can set that to be a log scale if we choose. I can customize the color map of one surface and copy and paste it to another. To do that, we double click on the graph, which opens up plot details. I can select vSurface 1 first. And then what I want to do is modify the level and fill. So let's set the number of major le levels to 8. We want 16 minor levels. 
And let's go ahead and also add a, or load a palette. And now I can apply this, which updates the data plot for my first virtual matrix. Now I can simply copy this and then go over here and select vSurface 2 and paste that. And then notice it updates everything here and then I can apply that so that um, the second surface has those same settings. So there's a couple other things we need to do now. We can set the transparency of the second surface so that parts of the first surface are visible. To do that, I need to go to the Surface tab and I want to make sure I'm looking at the V surface too, the second surface there. And then we want to set the transparency here to 50%. We can also type in a value. And now we can see the first surface here under the second one. So this concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.